that's correct. Hi, thanks for coming. This is um, I'm Rebecca Wallage. I work for the QT company down in Santa Clara, not as it says there, Android Wear. Um, I'm here to talk about QT on your wrist. So um, by that, of course, I mean we're QT on Android Wear, which is the smartwatch from Google. Okay, does anyone uh, have an interest in Android or QT on Android Wear yet? Okay. Okay, um, QT on Android Wear, it's not the first time QT is running on a smartwatch, it's not the only smartwatch which QT runs on. There's also the Asteroid uh, operating system which is a, a Yocto build which you need to run entirely on the watch. Uh, we're not looking at that now, we're actually looking rather, rather than replacing the entire operating system, adding your own applications and putting your own apps on the smartwatch and running them that way, so a little tiny bit easier. Um, so we're going to take a look at what it takes to get Qt running on Android Wear and I can assure you it's not complicated so uh, let's go. A lot of people have heard about this little project we had and they've been asking where the patches are for Qt on Android Wear and I'm quite happy to say that there actually are no patches for Qt on Android Wear. It uh, actually just uses the Qt API already for Qt on Android. Um, but there's a couple of steps you need to go through to get it uh, running okay on uh, on the smartwatch. Okay, so first thing to do, of course, you've got your Qt application and you're getting ready to run it on your smartwatch. And it almost works. It doesn't quite, but it nearly works. Um, Android Wear is basically just uh, Android running on an ARM chip, much the same as a regular Android smartphone. So really all you need to do is use the API 4.4W, which of course is the Android API for Android Wear. Unfortunately, you do that and your API will crash um, because the default theme is not working. The Qt default theme does not work on Android Wear. Uh, it's pretty easy to get around that simple fix. Um, we just change the default theme in the Android manifest. So what we have here at the top, we have the default Android manifest XML file. Um, you just change the device, the change the theme to the device default, and you have an app which will run on Android Wear. So, cool. But the first apps, when they're running on Android Wear, they're kind of annoying. They uh, they will kind of slide off the screen after a couple of minutes. Um, the reason they do this is because Android Wear has an ambient mode, um, and the amb ambient mode is there to save the battery life, so the app doesn't keep running. And for that reason, it will close it down fairly quickly. Um, so what we need to do is to handle the ambient mode, get that running OK. Um, and we can fix that fairly easily. We do that with some Java code. So of course, anyone worked on Qt Android, anyone know the internals of Qt Android Next at all? Not yet? OK, basically a Qt Android app running on Android, it's basically subclassing the activity class, the Java class, which runs on any Android device. Um, for Android Wear, we have the Wear activity class, um, Java, and this provides the uh, sleep mode, the ambient mode feature. A Java can't, or you can't do multiple inheritance on a Java class. So what we do is we create a new class, um, which subclasses the Wear activity. And then we use that, and we add a couple more classes to handle the new class, and it, and it works good. Um, if you're interested in seeing how much code we needed to do for this, it wasn't a great deal. I will try and show you this now. Um, I haven't tested this, so this might go horribly wrong. But here we have a pretty short little example of the code we needed to change. You see, we're basically just changing the activity to a where activity, and we are then calling this one symbol, simple, simple call to set ambient enabled, so not a great deal that we needed to do. Okay, to get that to build properly at all, of course in Qt Creator we need to use the Gradle um, build system. If you're familiar with Android, you'll know that Gradle is the uh, Google way of building apps on Android, so we switched that on in Qt Creator, that's a little checkbox there. Um, we also then add the relevant classes which we need to download to the build.gradle file. So you'll see there we're actually calling the where activity classes and downloading them. 
And the great news is that compiles. Nice, sweet. And then when you go to run it, that's going to crash. So uh, it's one of those fantastic crashes which looks frustrating, but actually gives you the solution, so it tells you how to fix it. Um, the final issue, uh, basically, you just need to give permission to the Android Wear to use the, um, to use the relevant classes. And that's a simple matter of adding a single line into the Android Manifest XML file. Just pop it in there, and you're good to go. You've got um, Qt running on your smartwatch. Uh, if you're using Mac, there's a tiny problem with the Mac build system where the image cruncher fails. Again, simple fix of that is to switch the image cruncher off, getting in the build Gradle file. Um, and we're all done and we're all working. So we have an Asus Zen watch to look at if you haven't seen them. It's downstairs, or actually it's here. So um, that will be downstairs when I've finished here. And you can check them out if you're interested. Um, from a technical point of view, it's not particularly exciting. But from a thing point of view, it's tiny and it's, it's cool. And it's actually, I think, one of the smallest demos we've ever had at the QT World Summit. So there you go. OK, so uh, three and a half minutes left. So the next steps we want to do for QT on Android Wear, um, what we need to do next. Um, Android Wear also offers a watch face class, so you can create a native watch face using Qt, or you should be able to create a native watch for a Qt, and that's one of the things we want to do next, so you can a little cute quick watch face. Asteroid OS also has this already, so it'll be the same kind of thing. Okay, um, we could do a bit more with the Wear Activity Ambient Mode. We could use uh, Qt's cute quick state system to switch the ambient mode between regular mode and change the relevant graphics. That's one thing we could do. Um, I was talking to the chap in the room next door, um, Bogdan Vatra, earlier. We may not actually need to use the Wear Activity class at all. If we can synthesize the, what the steps the Wear Activity uses in Qt Activity, then we could make an even easier, even easier way of running on smartwatches. Um, there's no patches to Qt at the moment, so we're going to look at uh, publishing our changes so that you know all you guys can use it. Um, finally, we're looking at Qt Creator integration, so maybe a new tab in the Android Manifest editor so that you can just uh, switch to the tab and change your uh, classes. OK, everyone happy? Cool. Any questions? No, no questions. Any questions? Uh, going around the mic?